Welcome to my lecture online. This is a problem for those physicists who are very curious about finding things, such as finding the moment of inertia of a wind vane. So here we have a bird sitting on top of a rod, which is free to rotate, and of course the wind will then point in the direction, or the air will point in the direction of the wind. But let's see what we have here. We have a rod on which the bird sits that has a mass m, we have a string that goes around the rod over a pulley with a big mass M hanging from it. We allow the mass to drop down and we find how far it drops. It drops a distance h in time t. So knowing the mass of the rod, the diameter of the rod is two times the radius. And knowing the mass of the block, the mass of the, of the rod, the height that it drops in time t, from all that, we should be able to find the moment of inertia in those terms. The small mass of the rod, the big mass of the weight of the mass here, the radius of the rod, the height through which it drops, the time that it took to drop, and of course, acceleration due to gravity. Okay, how do we go about doing that? Well, let's see here. Well, we can start with the concept of torque. We're going to find the rotational equivalent of F equals MA. We're going to convert that to torque equals I times alpha. So we can then say that I is equal to the torque divided by the angle acceleration. Of course, that's equal to the total moment of inertia, the moment of inertia of the rod and the wind vane combined. So we can say that I total is equal to I of the rod plus I of the wind vane and that should be equal to the torque divided by the angle of acceleration. Now, the torque is going to be caused by the tension in the rope. So we have the tension in the rope, so that will be equal to the tension times the radius over which it acts, which is the radius of the rod, divided by the angle of acceleration. The angle of acceleration is going to be the linear acceleration divided by the radius, r. That, of course, that's the angle of acceleration of the rotation of the wind vane. Now the tension of the string caused by this mass, which is accelerating downward, is going to be equal to mg, the weight of that, minus ma, because it's accelerating downward, multiplied times the radius, divided by the linear acceleration, divided by the radius. And of course, then if we bring the radius up here, this becomes the radius squared. All right, but now, we need to know the acceleration, but we know that it dropped distance h in time t, so we can use the equation of kinematics to find that. We can say that y is equal to y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared. And notice that these two components need to be zero because there's no initial height and no initial velocity in the y direction. So then the y, which is the distance dropped, is h h is equal to one-half the acceleration times the time squared, which means that the acceleration is equal to two times the h divided by t squared, and that can be substituted into there. So that means that the i total, which is the sum of the i of the rod, plus the i of the wind vane, which is now going to be equal to the quantity mg minus, oh, that should be big M, big MA times R squared, all divided by A, and A is now going to be written as 2H, divided by T squared, but that means the T squared can go to the numerator. All right, we're almost there. Now what we're going to do is, of course, we also need to plug in A in here, not just in what the A in the denominator, we have an A in the numerator as well. So let's go ahead and come up here and continue. So now we have I total is equal to I of the rod plus I of the wind vane, which is now going to be equal to the quantity Mg minus Ma. M and A is going to be written as 2H divided by T squared, and that's then multiplied times R squared t squared, all divided by 2h. Looks like we can, we can factor out an m, and then we can multiply the t squared in here and see what we get. So we have i total, 
which is equal to I of the rod plus I of the wind vane, which is what we're looking for, which is equal to the mass times, well, when we multiply the T squared times the G, we get G T squared minus 2H over T squared multiplied times T squared. That gives us simply 2H divided by 2H, and we still have the R squared right here. And then, of course, what we could do is we could divide the 2H into here, Right? So now we have I total equals I of the rod. Now I'm going to calculate I of the rod. It's a cylinder, a solid cylinder, so I of a solid cylinder would be one half the mass of the cylinder times the radius squared. So it's I of the rod plus I of the wind vane is equal to, divide that in there, we get the mass times GT squared over 2H minus 1 times r squared, and finally, when we want to then find i of the wind vane, that's going to be what we had there, which is m times gt squared over 2h minus 1 times r squared, and now we're going to subtract from that the i of the rod, which is 1 half m r squared, and then, of course, we can factor on r squared. So finally, we can say that uh, the I of the wind vane is equal to, let's see here, we have mr squared. Uh, let's see here. No, we're going to factor out an, an r squared. So we get m times, well, let's see. Should I have that in here? Yeah, we can go ahead and do that. So that would be m times gt squared over 2h minus 1. I'm going to put brackets there. I'm going to subtract the minus one half m for the rod, and then we can write times r squared. And now I think we have a pretty good compact form of the moment of inertia of the wind vane. Notice it's in terms of the mass of the weight coming down, g, the time that it took for the height to drop. We have h, we have the mass of the rod, and we have the radius of the rod right there. And so that's how we find the moment of inertia of the wind vane. So next time you buy a wind vane and you want to know the moment of inertia, you can set up an experiment like that and find out what the moment of inertia is of that wind vane. Of course, we have to then ignore any wind resistance and all that as well. But that is how it's done.